Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, as I always say now, anybody who does want to skip right to the game, right to the analysis, go ahead and hit that button at the very top of the description, uh, and it'll take you to the exact point that I start the analysis. For anybody else, got some things for you real quick. Um, so uh, one thing I will say about playing on chess.com now um, is I have uh, been getting a lot better. Um, so uh, I have my rating has been going up. So I am encountering uh, titled players a lot more often uh, than I used to before. Uh, you know, I'm not playing them all the time, but, you know, I definitely have a higher frequency of experiencing playing them. Uh, so I've gotten, uh, you know, some pretty mixed, uh, you know, things. I, I don't play GMs hardly ever. Uh, I mean, I think I probably come across women grandmasters um, a lot more frequent uh, than I do come across a, 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 tip, a regular GM. Uh, they're just really high. So, of course, I'm not playing like, you know, Eric Hansen or, you know, like Hikaru or anybody right now because I still am, uh, you know, mid-2200, which isn't low. But, I mean, I'm just not all the way up there. And they're not going to play me because if they happen to get scalped, they're going to be kind of embarrassed. So, you know, they can't do that. Um, but uh, these players are very hard, as you can imagine. Uh, even though this guy's rating is 2200, he definitely is playing at a much higher level. Um, I think actually he plays uh, a little bit slow um, as a GM. Um, you know, uh, he, he plays very, very strong. Uh, but he's not as quick as some of the other, you know, 28, 2900 players. Uh, so I think that's why his rating is where it is. But uh, he definitely was the type of player that I was playing against where if your openings aren't 100% good uh, and you're not you're not aware of the different traps that are in the openings, uh, you know, you can definitely be in some pretty uh, rough waters. Uh, and in this game uh, in particular, um, I was actually dead lost uh, uh, for quite a while. Uh, and then I got it back to even. Uh, and then, I mean, the game shifted from like negative, you'll see it like negative 11 all the way to like mating for me. And it's like, <laughs> he literally, he, he really let me off the hook in this game. Um, but um, I do hate <laughs> the opening, the gambit that he's using. Uh, I'm just a, a hater of gambits in general. Like I know some people love playing with gambits, uh, but I don't know. I just have a really bad taste in my mouth with gambits, man. I just, I'm like, dude. I want to, like, I play, I don't play gambits myself, so I'm not the gambit type guy. Uh, so I feel like all gambits should be crushed. Uh, so uh, sorry if you love gambits uh, and I just uh, threw hate speech on your gambits, but um, I really kind of feel like, you know, they're just tricky. Uh, and I mean, they're just meant to mislead uh, and they're giving away pieces. They're playing not my type of way. So I feel like it is my mission to crush gambits, period. So. I'm glad I got the win in this game. But um, for all my people from the Philippines, um, I will say mabuhay. Kamusta na aking makaibigan. Hello, you lit. Magandang umaga, magandang hapon, magandang gabi, magandang aro, whatever time of day it is for you. Kamusta na aking makaibigan. Appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Anybody who is coming from India, um, I will say namaste to you. I appreciate you very much for stopping by. If you guys are ready to go, Let's take a look and see what we have for this game. I almost stopped video on accident. <laughs> anyway, let's roll. Uh, so I do have E4. Let me uh, get the volume up correctly. All right. Uh, and, you know, I'm a French player, so I played E6. We got D4, D5. So this is pretty much going to almost always be what you see when you're playing the French defense. Uh, you know, you're going to see this E4, D4 uh, and then E6, D5 setup. It's not always, but this is going to be definitely the best way to play for white and for black. Uh, and then we do have the French advance variation. Uh, and I'm actually pretty legitimate in the French advance. Um, so I can definitely have, I, I, I definitely think I'm more winning than I am losing. Uh, don't take this game as an example uh, because I, I thoroughly misplayed this opening. Uh, but we do see C5, which is going to always, almost always going to come after you do see the advance. Uh, we do see c3, knight comes to c6. We got knight to f3, uh, and then I play my line queen to b6. And this is definitely one of the best ways to play. Uh, you know, you have the option of going knight g uh, to e7. Uh, you can play knight uh, to, to d7, or bishop to d7. Uh, but I personally choose to go queen to b6. Um, it is not a sideline. It's definitely one of the main lines. Uh, but I think, I mean, it's a pretty challenging 
uh, way to play. So um, we do see bishop to d3, uh, and this is what is known as the Milner Berry Gambit. Uh, and uh, you're basically going to be giving away this pawn uh, in the center, uh, but you do have a lot of play. Um, against black if they're not careful. I have lost very many games in this So it is my life mission to demolish the Milner Berry Gambit uh, Pawn takes d4 pawn takes d4 uh, and then we have bishop to d7 You want to be very careful Because you definitely do not want to take on d4 immediately with this knight because knight taking back queen taking back You have not won a pawn. You've just lost your queen and I mean, I when I first started playing uh, the the French Advance as you know from the black side, probably like the first game or two, I accidentally did this, and this isn't the only time that this can ever happen. Um, this this type of discovery attack is very present uh, in uh, many different types of positions. Uh, so this is definitely uh, <laughs> just something that you have to be wary of. So for me personally. Whenever I am thinking of winning a pawn, um, I always check to my left. I always check to my right uh, or my left and my right and make sure that there aren't any checks that can be placed with the bishop that is behind a pawn. So you get very good at doing that when you've been, uh, you know, <laughs> when you've been uh, burned in that way. So bishop does come to d7 uh, and then knight does come to c3. And it is now that you can actually capture the pawn. So I do so. Knight takes d4. And then we see castles, uh, which is the best way to play. Um, this is not always what you see. Normally what you do see um, is the knight taking back. Uh, and, uh, you know, you kind of go in this type of way here. The, you see castles, a6. Uh, the queen probably will come down to e2. Play uh, rook to c8. The king sidesteps because, you know, you are pinning this pawn down to the king. Uh, and then you have development that goes from there. You do have to be careful because there are a lot of traps that is the problem with this gambit. Um, it is definitely better for black, but there are a lot of traps and things that you have to know as black from this uh, from this thing. So, like I said, after knight takes d4, we did see castles, uh, and I decide to go knight takes f3 with check, uh, and then queen does take, uh, and then we have knight to e7. You have to be very careful, uh, you know, when uh, you know trying to grab this pawn. Uh, because once rook does swing to e1, uh, this pawn is actually capturable. Uh, so you can pretty much take it with whatever you want. So, you know, you do have a pawn, but black, white has a lot of activity for this pawn. So this is a very legitimate gambit, unfortunately. So after I play knight g to e7, or knight to e7, uh, he plays bishop to e3. Which kind of seems like you're looking at it like, man, wait a minute. <clears throat> Isn't this just forking the knight and the bishop? It is, but the unfortunate thing is there really isn't a great way to exploit it uh, because uh, there is a big trap in the position uh, for white. And I literally fall right into it uh, because I am not theorized uh, in this um, as well as I should be. Uh, so I do press D4 and I say, man, you know what? I got a pawn or I got a, I got a piece, right? You know, like, let me just get a piece. So the knight does come to G, uh, knight does come to e4, and this is where the trap is in the position, and you have to make sure that you're playing correctly. Now I'll show you the correct way to play out of this. Instead of taking the bishop on e3, you need to go knight to g6 first, uh, and then after the bishop escapes, then you can uh, go uh, bishop to c6, uh, and you can notice that the bishop is protecting. Uh, the check on d6 and more importantly if the knight does move um, the queen is hit with the bishop So you have to be kind of careful as white, you know how you're playing through this But you have to let the bishop uh, protect this diagonal. I did not do that. <laughs> I said hey, man This is a free bishop so I took on e3 and This set up, you know quite a bit of kamikaze uh, for my opponent um, and so I misplayed this opening to this point, and then, I mean, I literally go fall down to Avalanche. Uh, and it is only my opponent that saves me. The knight comes to d6 with check, and this is always something that you have to be paying attention to uh, when you play the French. Uh, because, I mean, knight to d6 in many different openings of the French um, is possible. You'll play Classicals. Uh, you'll play uh, Chatard Ali Ekins and stuff like that. And this knight to d6 after knight to b5 can be very, very annoying. So I do move king to uh, to d8, only move. 
Uh, the knight takes on f7 with check. <clears throat> and then you are supposed to go king to c7. <clears throat> it does seem like it just kind of puts your king in the line of fire. Uh, but, you know, if a rook does check, you do have the ability to cover uh, some kind of way, like with the knight to c6 and, you know, freeing up the bishop and stuff like that. But, like I said, I did not play that way. I went back king to e8. Uh, and this is a horrible blunder. <laughs> this is not how you want to play. The knight takes on a8, and the unfortunate thing about my move um, is queen to f7 is on tap. So after bishop comes to c6, queen comes to f7 with check, and I have to go king to d7, uh, because if not, uh, this bishop was dropping. And then after that, my rook is dropping. So I'm kind of playing the way that you need to play, but as you can see, I mean, my king is dead stuck in the center of the board. And that is one of the things about playing the French defense is you have to uh like no theory really really great because your king does usually end up in situations where you do not castle and a lot of the times it's good but sometimes it's bad so we do see rook a to d1 and i say man you know what like i mean i'm gonna just kind of go down swinging because i feel like i'm gonna lose the game so i'm gonna go ahead and capture on f2 with check and this is also a horrible blunder Normally, when you are in a position where you're being attacked, throwing in the check is not usually a bad thing because, I mean, you know, the opponent has to respond to this check. But unfortunately, in this position, it doesn't really help my position at all. Uh, so the king sidesteps over to h1. He doesn't even capture the pawn. And then I move queen to, to, to e7. Um, you know, I'm kind of feeling like... <laughs> There's not a whole lot that, that that white really has in the position. They have this discovery, but, you know, it's not like a double check or anything. So maybe I can kind of weasel out. I can kind of sidestep over to c7, which, I mean, unfortunately doesn't work. He actually goes bishop to e4, uh, discovering a, an attack on my king with the rook on d1. And I do sidestep over to c7. After the bishop takes on c6, I actually take with the king on c6. Uh, and I'm really trying to run this way somewhere. Uh, this knight is no longer pinned, uh, so I'm thinking of moving it somewhere at some point. Uh, now, backing up, after uh, we see my queen fly over to e4, just being super strong in the center of the board, right? He actually has the discover bishop takes h7 with check. Uh, and this is a way to free his knight out of the corner. Um, but he does miss that. You know, of course, after I sidestep over to c7, uh, you are adding a lot of pressure uh, by moving the knight back to g6. And you are going to be winning a piece. Uh, I mean, I probably would have to go rook over to e8. But, I mean, it's still pretty miserable for me. I mean, so I'm kind of glad he did what he did. Uh, so um, we do see uh, bishop taking c6, king taking c6. Uh, and then the rook does take on f2. You know, it is protected by the queen, so we're all good. And so then I take the opportunity to go knight to d5. But queen uh, taking e6 is live in the position, but he, he does not do that. He actually goes rook uh, over to c2 with check, which is, I mean, pretty much just as a legitimate move. The king sidesteps over to b6. And queen taking e6 is still a possibility in this position, but he misses it and goes h3. I'm not sure why he creates a look for his king. In this position his king is like thoroughly not in danger and this does allow me to kind of free my position up just a touch with bishop uh to c5 now queen taking e6 is still alive here and i'm just honestly not sure why he always continued to not play that but he doesn't and so this allows me to kind of be saved even though he's like thoroughly 1000 percent winning here he does play b4 bishop takes b4 uh, queen taking e6 is still alive, but he does take on uh, d5. <laughs> he takes on d5 with his rook, and I honestly can't understand why. Um, I mean, queen taking e6 was like so juicy. I mean, I think anybody that's watching this video would have done that, but magically he doesn't, and so I, I survive. Rook takes e, uh, d5, pawn takes d5. Uh, and then we see queen to f7 with check. He must have calculated that there was like some type of mate here. But I mean, this bishop and this queen are actually doing a pretty good job of defending uh, my king. Uh, so I sidestep over to a6. And as you guys can see now, it is dead even. <laughs> it is triple zeros. So it's like a dream for me to be triple zeros after being uh, what I consider to be in the fire. 
Now it's dead even, triple zeros. So I kind of have my own game that I can play. My rook is actually active now. My bishop is not in a bad position. I mean, I can block checks with b6. Uh, you know, my queen is actually finally now <laughs> active. Uh, so I'm actually not doing too bad. Uh, and I'm actually up a pawn. I mean, at the end. So the knight does escape to f7. I pin it down with rook to, to, to uh, f8. Because if this knight does move anywhere, I'm checking here. The king is going to come down. Uh, and then I'm going to be uh, tossing in some some really nasties with uh, checks here. So we do see a three and uh, I find uh, pretty much like the one of the only, so there's four moves pretty much that are drawn. Uh, and I just move my bishop out of the way to probably the best square I can think of. My idea here um, is trying to toss some type of check on this back rank uh, and, and move this bishop down to f4. Uh, so I go bishop to d2. I'm planning to move my queen out of the way. Uh, and then after I do, place a check on f4 with the bishop. And I'm thinking maybe I might have some type of mating net. But it is dead even. The queen comes up to uh, check over here. Uh, and then I do go uh, b6. And yeah. Uh, I feel like there is a uh, check here. Let me see. Or there's a, a capture here. What happens with this? Uh, queen comes to e1 with check. King comes to h2. So kind of, kind of what happened in the game. Um, he didn't go that. He actually went down uh, to d7, uh, just protecting um, his knight. Um, and he is kind of getting slightly low on time. Like now, not crazy low, but he's getting a little bit low. Uh, so I actually go queen um, to e1 with check here. The king steps down to uh, to h2. And I'm thinking that I have something here. I'm like, you know what? I'm like dead winning. Uh, and I actually am. I'm plus 13 here. So I have to be able to <laughs> I have to be able to convert this, this opportunity. Uh, so the bishop comes down to f4 with check. We see g3. Queen takes on uh, on uh, g3 uh, with check. The king steps up to h1, only move. Uh, and then I start checking. Yes, I start checking. So I will actually pause the video here for you guys. If you guys want to go in and take a look at the position and see what should stick out to you, I'm just I'm not looking for a move. I'm looking for a specific answer. Go ahead and pause the video and see what should stick out to you in this position here. Okay, cool. So I think hopefully a majority of you, if not all of you, will say that they notice that this that this rook is undefended. So like I said, I'm not looking for a move. I'm looking for if you noticed that this rook is all by itself, just kind of hanging out with itself, just in this area here, and it is alone. So there is a way to continue checking this white king so that you can win this rook. And that is the idea that I had. There are a few different ways to do it, but the idea is to try to continue to check the king to force it onto one of these uh, light squares when you can place a check here and pick up this rook. So that is exactly what I do. So giving being given this golden opportunity, I am capitalizing on this. So the king steps over to g1. I place a check on e3 with the bishop. The king steps down to h2. Now I take the opportunity to knock the king onto a light square. Uh, so I check on f4 with the queen, uh, and this forces the king either to g uh, h1 or g2. Uh, and so he decides to step to g2. Uh, and then now I place the check, queen to e4. <laughs> and this does fork of the king uh, and the queen. Um, and um, it is forcing uh, a, is it not forcing something? Yeah, wait a minute. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, he sidesteps over, which allow, oh, this allows me a check. So this is what he does in the game, but I'm thinking, after this, you go queen to h, queen takes c2. Ah, yeah, because there's no, I was thinking there was a perpetual here. Uh, if my queen does not control this diagonal uh, and it goes literally anywhere else, uh, there is actually a perpetual check, I believe, back and forth like this. So that is not possible with the position right here because my queen, de my queen defends. So there is no check here. Okay, that's the important thing to know. I, I was calculating and I was thinking, what did he have that? Uh, so I do, like I said, go queen to e4. The king sidesteps over to h2, but this does allow me to take this, this uh, rook with tempo. Uh, and so queen takes c2 with check, and then the king comes down, and then I place queen to f2 with check. 
the king comes down to g4 and not paying attention to the fact that I had a maiden too, I literally uh, just went ahead and just captured the rook. Uh, I mean, I have quite a bit of time left, but you know, in these bullet games, sometimes you don't see everything. Uh, so it is in this position um, that he actually, uh, he, he just, his time runs. Uh, he only has a second left, but this was a game that I actually was able to like, you know, just really climb back in the game. I mean, I've never, I've been that losing before, but I mean, that was actually pretty miserable to be in. And it really literally just came down to the point where like I took the bishop thinking I had a piece and he showed me that I didn't have a piece. So it was bad. But backing up um, after uh, the king uh, did come down to g4, um, I actually had this mate in two um, after queen to f4 with check, forcing the king to h5. Uh, you actually have g6 and this is mate. Um, so, you know, of course, in a longer game, these are things that you see. And looking at the game a little bit later, I did notice like, OK, well, you know, I did have this as a possibility. So uh, that is that. Um, so, um, I did, uh, achieve a new high, uh, yesterday in chess.com 2271 in bullet. So, uh, I'm definitely higher than I've ever been before. So it's nice to be there. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by and hanging around with me for 21 minutes. <laughs> I try not to ever go this long, but I appreciate you guys very much. Uh, Mitterming Salamat, uh, King Makai Bigan. Uh, and uh, Makito Tayo Mamaya, and I will see everybody next time.